Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back. My name is Steve and this is My Plan Honey. There's been one headline that's been dominating the news recently and last week and this week as well. And that's the news of Silicon Valley Bank that collapsed last week. There's been a lot of attention around its collapse and understandably so. It's the biggest, the second biggest collapse of bank in US history. Um, and it's not, it's not a small bank, it's not a mid-sized bank, it's a huge bank that's located in the West Coast. So uh, it's a big, big deal. Being in the financial services industry myself, I do have some insights on what has happened and what is going on currently. And I share my thoughts with you as I you know, sip some of this whiskey that I have in front of me. Three points basically I like to go over. Number one, who are involved? What are the parties involved with this whole debacle? And two, what basically has happened? What's going on and what was, what's unfolding as we speak? And three, what are some of the shady things that I see that's happening? What are some of the questionable happenings that are associated with this whole situation? So those three points I'll go over with you uh, as I sip this fine whiskey of bomb burgers. We'll crack this bad boy right open and uh, we'll get right to it. First thing first, the whiskey. All right. Here it is. It's the bomb burgers Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey 108 proof 54% uh, alcohol by volume. It's the 2022 release. It's made by the Michter's Distillery. So it's their yearly special release or limited release or whatever they call it. They have a couple of these that they release. They have the Bomb Burgers, they have the Shanks. All right, let's open it up. Here we go. Never tried it. It's pretty popular. It's relatively sought after, right? I think uh, it's very allocated. Um, I rarely see it. If I do see it, it's marked up to. I've seen it last time around like 2.99. Um, I think the MSRP is probably half that or third of that. But it's around 300 bucks, 250 or something like that. And uh, it's a once a year release. It's a pretty strong nose, though. Mm. All right. Well, cheers. Very smooth, very smooth. Oh, it has like a floral notes to it. Like a slight floral, like a melony taste to it, I, I just noticed. Interesting. Before I start get going, I do have a story to share. A little story, personal story. Back in high school, I, I used to live in a small house, rented house with you know, a family of four. And one night, I was in my bed and I hear all this commotion outside and I peek out the window and I see you know, this tow truck parked right outside, right behind my, my dad's minivan, family minivan. And I see two huge guys coming out of the van, and I mean, uh, coming out of the, the tow truck. And they're putting all these chains and all these, you know, re receptacles and attachments to my dad's minivan. I see my dad out there, I see my mom out there, my dad, you know, he's, you know, he's shouting and he's yelling and he's pointing and clearly upset at these folks who are trying to do these things to his minivan. Uh, my mom at the corner, you know, with, this, with her arms crossed and sort of, I think I could see her tears coming down. So they're basically trying to tow my car, my dad's car out of our own house's driveway. And, you know, my dad's yelling and clearly upset. The two guys are trying to calm him down, but at the same time, you know, they don't really care. They're, you know, putting all that stuff on my dad's, one end of dad's car. And then after 30 minutes or so, I think they're gone. I learned after a couple of years that they uh, repossessed the car. They took the car away because we weren't able to make the payments on the car. So they came in the middle of the night around you know, 12 or one and they just towed the car away and that was the end of the story. I say that because there's some parallel to what's going on right now and 20 some years later, right? The Silicon Valley Bank, they were having some trouble and word got around to the depositors, to, to the people who entrusted Silicon Valley Bank with all their money. So, they started going to the bank to withdraw all their money. The classic 
run the bank. You know, run the bank means they go to the bank. All the depositors, they go in masses, they withdraw as much money as they can all at once. $40 billion in a matter of hours they try to withdraw. Obviously, they don't have that much cash to withdraw. So that led to a catastrophic failure. Um, the Fed stepped in, they took over. They took ownership of the bank basically or receivership. And, um, and that's what happened last week. This is really buttery, by the way. Like mix of caramel. I taste some honeydew in here. A little bit like a flowery, like like a flower petal, like rose flower petal-ish note. A lot of caramel, like light caramel, not dark. Sweet, floral, and fruity, all at the same time. Slight oakiness too. It's delicious. Complex, complex. So let's go over the points. First, who is involved with this whole debacle? Two parties, obviously. First one is the SVB, the Silicon Valley Bank. They're a huge bank. They mainly serve the tech industry, uh, the startups, the medical supplies and whatnot. They're very well known. So, you know, last week they're very well respected. They have assets over hundreds of billions of, of dollars. So they're huge. They're not just some, you know, local bank that had a few million dollars in the bank. Nothing like that. They're billions and billions uh, that they sort of manage. And a lot of their customers are entities or like corporations or customers that are huge. So that's the one party involved. But the other party of the story is the feds, obviously. They are the United States government, the United States treasury, who are directly or indirectly involved with oversight of all the financial institutions. They are the sort of governing body of all the banks. And in this case, they were the sort of the rescuers or the heroes, quote unquote, to bail a lot of the people out that are involved with this unfortunate collapse. Those are the two parties that are involved, main parties that are involved. So number two, what happened to the SVB bank that resulted in its demise? Well, there's so many stories. There's so obviously there's a lot of factors. It's not just one factor that completely destroyed the entire bank. It was, it's not like that. There's multiple prongs of things that happened uh, that ultimately related to its collapse. But then one of the main thing, if I had to pick one thing, their investments, they're heavily involved in US treasury bonds. These are bonds that the US government guarantees. And they bought these bonds years ago when pre-COVID or around COVID when the interest rate was very low. They bought it because a lot of people believe and it is a very secure investment. But now with the shaky economy, with COVID, uh, post-COVID stimulus package and its you know, weaning effects of it, especially with the interest rate hike, those bonds that they're holding for 1%, are no longer as valuable in this many more. In fact, they were less valuable than how much they bought it for. Now, the US government is selling the bonds at what, 5%, 6%, right? So the bonds they were holding previously for 1% or whatever the, the exact percentage was, is no longer valuable. In fact, they're much less value than they even bought it for. That's like saying I'm your bank and you give me a hundred dollars to, to safe keep it. And I go and buy this whiskey for you know hundred dollars, thinking this is gonna appreciate over time to three hundred dollars or whatever. But in fact, over a you know, number of years, it depreciates to let's just say fifty dollars. Right? And then at the time, you know, you being my customer, uh, hear a window this this news and ask me, hey, see, I want my hundred dollars back. I am unable to give you that hundred dollars because even if I sell this to whoever wants to buy this, I can only sell it for 50 bucks. It's no longer worth hundred dollars. It's only 50 bucks. So that's sort of the you know high level, very simplistic uh, reason for the failure of SVB Bank. They have all these investments that they bought at X amount. Now it's worth much less than that. So I believe last week they tried to sell a portion of their investment and, and they did sell it but they sold it at huge losses, billions and billions of losses. I think that sort of triggered uh, the feds to immediately take over the bank. That's what happened. And all these people started going to the banks to withdraw their money, 40 in the tune of 40 billion. Obviously they didn't have the money and they shut down the bank. The feds took over. They are now under the control of the US government. Just yesterday though, I think it's yesterday or the day before, they, uh, the feds came out with a joint statement with the IRS and they 
and the treasury saying, hey, we understand, and we're gonna guarantee all the deposit, not just up to $250,000, but all the way up to amount, whatever amount that you had, they're gonna guarantee the entire portion of it. They got bailed out, even though they screwed up on their investments and made bad calls. You know, Uncle Sam came swooping in and uh, bailed them out, so. Cheers to Uncle Sam and all the depositors of uh, SVB. That's, uh, that is good news, that is good news, in the big scheme of things. So that's basically what happened with this second biggest failure of bank in the United States history. Lastly, number three, what are some of the things that came out of this whole debacle that's, that's actually shady or, or questionable or doesn't sound right? I mean, there's a lot of things that came out of this thing that doesn't sound right. The feds bailed them out, as I mentioned before, meaning not only did they guarantee the $250,000 for all depositors, if they went above and beyond and ensured that all deposits in excess of 250000 was guaranteed by the feds. Which is great news. You know, again, in big scheme of things, I think that was the only choice that the US government had in order to come out with the best combination of outcome. I believe that. But I really do not like bailing these big institutions out every time something happens. SVP, you know, they make billions and billions of dollars in wrong investment, wrong choices. They can't pay its investors. And let's bail them out. 100% no problem. The Fed comes in. Chase Banks needs, I believe, billions and billions, hundreds of billions of dollars. Here you go. Goldman Sachs, hey, can we get some billions and billions of dollars of free money? No problem. Here you go. Every time something happens and these folks make mistakes or do something fraudulent, borderline fraudulent even, the Fed comes in and they just bail them out and bail them out and bail them out at the expense of the taxpayers, expense of you and I. Like, that just that just seems unfair. Maybe once in a while is fine, but it happens every single time. Again, I understand that this is the only course of action that the US government could have taken in order to come out with the best um, combination of outcome. I believe that, I believe that, but it keeps happening. And these folks, they walk free with millions and millions of dollars in their, you know, in their bank account. And you know, they're going to go to another bank, another institution after a couple of years, and they're going to do the same thing. There's no repercussion. There's no accountability. There's no responsibility. There's no consequence for any of these actions. In fact, they walk away with millions of dollars, the senior management, the CEOs, the CFO, the, C, the chief marketing folks, a bunch of guys, they cashed out on stock options millions and millions of dollars of stock options a few weeks before this thing happened like days before this thing happened that's just preposterous that's just outrageous that's ridiculous how how is that even allowed and they're still walking around free that's uh, I can't drink. so there it is guys i mean that those are the couple things that really grinds my gear that that really bugs me i mean those are Definitely shady things, definitely red flags that I see out of this whole debacle. But I mean, it is what is, what can, what can we do? Okay, we gotta bail these out, people out, uh, people with money in these banks, these entities with money in these banks that, that entrusted uh, this SVB with you know millions of dollars. I mean, it's not their fault. So uh, at the end of the day, I think government did the right thing to put trust back into the, to the consumers the depositors um, and try to move on from there. The moral of the story, I mean, if you got thousands of dollars, if you got millions of dollars, if you got billions of dollars, just find a big bank, find a big, you know, financial institution to uh, put it in. Is it a big bank that, that you think cannot afford to fail because worst thing happens, you know, some there's some crooks in there that blow all your money, gamble all your money and bad investments, that's gonna swoop in and then just bail them all out and in turn bail you out as well. So unlike my family and I who got our little used minivan taken away at 2 a.m. because we weren't able to uh, afford our $90 monthly payment. Nobody was able to bail us out. So yeah, that's that. That's all I have for you today. Hope you got something out of it. This Bomb Burgers was super good too. I didn't know what to expect of this one. It's super buttery, super butterscotchy. Has like notes of flour in there. I don't know what flour though. I thought it was absolutely delicious. I don't know if it's worth 300 bucks, but I mean, it's definitely worth 100 bucks, I think. I definitely enjoyed it.
and the finish is really oily. Really satisfying too. So definitely enjoyed it. Get a chance to see a bottle, pick it up at a reasonable price. Definitely recommend. So that's all I got. Thank you so much, everybody. If you get a chance, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, comment below. Let me know what you think of this whole situation, whole debacle, whole uh, shenanigan that's going on in this uh, and these days with the SVB and all the other banks that's really. Let me know what you think at the bottom. Have a good one. Have a good week, and I'll talk to you later. See ya.